Let's now consider the very well-known French economist Jean-Baptiste Say. Say's pro-liberty, free-market-oriented views brought him into conflict with the ruler of France at the time, Napoleon Bonaparte. Say refused to support the Bonaparte regime, and for a while he even considered emigrating to the United States. Say had correspondence with Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was a big fan, and Say had sent co Jefferson a copy of his book, Treatise on Political Economy. The treatise remained Say's major work. The first edition was published in 1803, and Say himself passed away in 1832. When I read Say's treatise, I'm struck by just how much he was influenced by Adam Smith. I think of Say as rewriting and revising Smith, but for a French audience, and also making it more free trade and more libertarian. One way to think about Say is that if you want to get a sense of what a libertarian-oriented classical economist might have believed in the early 19th century, well, Say is a good place to go to find out. One analytical difference with Adam Smith is that Say takes greater care to put entrepreneurship, individuals who start businesses and risk their capital, to put that at the center of his economic theory. I think of Say as having an economic approach very much centered around the human being, as it being fairly deductive, Adam Smith is more empirical, and Say's economics is based quite firmly on there being principles of political economy which can be deduced. Say very much believes in a supply and demand theory of value, and he criticized the labor theories of value found often in Great Britain. In general, the French economists during this time had a better understanding of the importance of utility, and they were less likely to be attracted to labor theories of value. Above all else, Say is still known today for what is very often called Say's Law. You can think of Say's Law as being one way of stating the principle of circular flow in an economy. For instance, if goods are produced, Income is generated from that production, and that income very often or eventually goes on to serve as demand for other goods and services. Just to put this in context a bit, Say remains famous because he was attacked quite heartily by John Maynard Keynes and many of the later Keynesians. They have a particular reading of Say, where they claim what Say meant is something like there is no general overproduction, or perhaps aggregate demand is always sufficient, the argument being that if things are produced, income is generated from production, and that income is spent automatically. And if that's how you interpret Say, well, then Say pretty much is wrong, because income is not automatically spent. It may be held in hoards, or to use other terminology, the velocity of money can vary. But as I read Say, Say didn't have a view that it was all automatic. I read Say as claiming more modestly that production is the source of demand, he had a circular flow understanding of how supply could generate demand, but he actually had a sophisticated understanding that it wasn't quite automatic, and in fact, Say had written Ricardo, and he criticized Ricardo for thinking that aggregate supply was automatically translated into aggregate demand, and Say then pointed out money can be held in hordes, especially when investment opportunities are not strong. So as I read Say, what he's really claiming is, if you have a problem with demand, at least start by looking at supply and try to understand what your supply problem is. And he's not saying that any increase in supply is automatically translated into market demand. In any case, these controversies continue up to the present day. If you'd like to learn more, well, Say's treatise I find pretty readable, and it's online. There's a very nice edition from Liberty Fund. You can get a cheap Kindle edition of Say's Letters to Malthus, and that shows you a very nice back and forth between two of the most important classical economists on the issues of Say's Law and general overproduction. A good online introduction to Say's Life and Ideas is by Robert Formani, and that's called Jean-Baptiste Say, Foundations of France's Free Trade Tradition. There's also a book by Samuel Hollander on Jean-Baptiste Say, and of course, just by googling Say's name, you'll get to other sources.